Can you generate market beating returns in the stock market simply by copying the moves of some of the best investors in the world by buying the stocks that they are buying and selling the stocks that they are selling? Well, a 2008 paper called Imitation is the Sincerest Form of Flattery suggested that yes, you can generate market beating returns if you copy some of the best investors in the world. That paper specifically looked at Warren Buffett and Berkshire Hathaway and what your returns would have been had you simply just copied the moves that Warren Buffett was making when the information became publicly available. Now of course hindsight is 2020, and when you pick the best investor in the world with the best track record in the world, it's probably not all that surprising that if you had simply copied their moves you would have uh, ended up generating great returns. And I really wanted to test uh, whether it is possible to still clone some of the best investors in the world, and also I wanted to really document some of the challenges that can potentially come along with cloning our favourite investors. So uh, in 2021 I set up a portfolio here on the channel, a hypothetical $100,000 portfolio called the Shameless Cloner Portfolio. And each quarter I have been documenting the returns that that portfolio has generated. Uh, I've also been documenting the moves and the changes that I've made as new quarterly data comes out on what our favorite investors are buying and selling. And uh, just last week we got a fresh batch of 13F filings in the US and we are due for another quarterly update. Now if you're interested in seeing all of the recent activity from some of my favorite investors, I just go back one video on the channel. I made a super detailed video about a lot of the buys and sells of uh, some of the most famous investors in the world, people like Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger and Manish Pabrai and Guy Spear. Uh, this video is going to be more dedicated towards how I'm taking that information and turning it into updates in this Shameless Cloner portfolio. So that is the topic for today's video. If you do enjoy it, be sure to hit like and also subscribe to the channel if you are new here. But for now, let's get straight into the video. Now firstly, just a quick refresher on some of our rules around the Shameless Cloner portfolio and uh, what I have kind of set up and you know the guidelines I've put in place to drive some of the decisions that I will make over time uh, with the stocks that I am buying and selling in the portfolio. Now, uh, the first one is I have sort of a Mount Rushmore of super investors. So these are some of my favorite investors who I think have a good chance of generating good returns moving forward. And these are the investors that um, for the most part will drive the stocks that end up in the portfolio. So uh, those investors are Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger, Monish Pabrai, Guy Spear, Lee Lu, and Norbert Lu. I'm not completely closed off to looking at a wider network of super investors if I need to, if we need to find additional stocks. And we have done that in previous quarters with people like Cliff Soson, but that is the core kind of Mount Rushmore of super investors I will try to be sticking to where possible. Now, uh, the second rule is that we are somewhat price sensitive, so we don't want to pay more than 30% of the midpoint price in a quarter in which a super investor bought a stock. So just for argument's sake, if Warren Buffett bought a stock that trade somewhere between 80 and 120 in a particular quarter uh, the midpoint would be 100 so we wouldn't want to pay more than say 130 30 percent above that midpoint price we also don't want to forget to look back at previous quarters so if a stock doesn't meet our price kind of rule in a given quarter if that stock goes down and the super investor still owns it we may reassess we want to end up with somewhere between a 5 and 10 stock portfolio so when the portfolio was first getting up and running we basically started started with 100% cash. Uh, as we would find stock ideas, we would put in full 20% positions, um, kind of pull some of the cash out of the portfolio in order to do that. And uh, once we get over that five stock kind of threshold, um, we will start to uh, basically allocate some of that 20% position into more of a 10 by 10 uh, portfolio, 10 stocks with about a 10% allocation. Uh, and as you'll see shortly in this update, we are almost at that full kind of 10 stock portfolio now. And finally, each quarter I am tracking the portfolio using a tool called ShareSite. This is the uh, platform that I use to track my own personal portfolio. It will give us all the types of different gain and loss that you can experience in the stock market. Uh, capital gains, currency fluctuations, and dividend income. So it should give us a really clear picture of what returns the portfolio is generating. Uh, and it also is what I use for my own tax reporting at uh, tax time as well. So if you're interested in ShareSite, 
there will be a link down in the description below sharesite.com forward slash investing with tom there is a free version which you can use forever if you have less than 10 stocks uh, if you have more than 10 stocks or want to get some better tax reporting that link will also get you four months free off of an annual subscription okay so let's jump over to sharesite now and have a look at how the portfolio has been performing and then uh, i will talk you through some of the new stocks that we have in the portfolio and also a couple of the sales that we have made in the last quarter as well so over on share site now you should see uh, the shameless cloner portfolio currently has a balance of about eighty six thousand five hundred dollars so we are down on our initial one hundred thousand dollars in capital uh, and if we compare that to our benchmark which is the s p 500 here which you will see in the kind of orange color um, since inception which was in october 2021 we are currently down 10.3 percent uh, versus the s p 500 down 4.3 percent so we are slightly lagging behind the s p 500 at the moment uh, you will see that in july we actually or kind of june july we did actually pull ahead of the s p 500 a little bit for the first time uh, but in the last month or so the shameless cloner portfolio has been pretty flat and uh, the s p 500 has kind of shot back up a little so we are currently lagging behind the s p 500 kind of since inception if we look just in the calendar year things have been a little healthier so for the calendar year, we're down 7% versus uh, about 10.5% for the S&P 500. So let's scroll down now and have a bit of a look at uh, the stocks that are actually in the portfolio so you can see currently how it looks. Now, uh, this does include some of the old positions that we have in the portfolio. So some that have uh, been sold completely out of will also be showing up here. But uh, let's kind of just work through top to bottom. Uh, some of them I will go through quite quickly because there haven't been any changes. Uh, some we have kind of had some changes in, so I will talk through that as well. Now, uh, currently our largest position is actually Chevron. That is a clone of Warren Buffett. Uh, we then have Winnebago, which is a clone of Norbert Liu, so no change to either of those stocks. Uh, thirdly, we have Alibaba, which is a clone of uh, Charlie Munger and also Guy Spear. And uh, next up, we have Berkshire Hathaway, which is the first stock, interestingly, that we have actually had a change in. Now, leading into this uh, most recent quarter of updates, there were actually only two stocks remaining that were a full 20% position at cost. One of those was Berkshire Hathaway and one of those was Alibaba and uh, we actually had to make probably the toughest decision I think I've had to make with this portfolio so far which was to choose between those two stocks in terms of which one I would cut in half to uh, kind of free up some capital to be allocated to one of our new positions. Now um, the choice between Alibaba and Berkshire Hathaway in terms of cutting one of those positions in half was really tough and I'm not too concerned about it in the long term I did end up picking Berkshire Hathaway to be sold in this quarter but uh, in the next one or two quarters uh, kind of the next new stock that we get to go into the portfolio uh, the other one will be cut in half as well so eventually you know the the Alibaba position will be halved also uh, and from a cloning aspect it was really kind of challenging I was trying to just follow the rules as, as closely as I could in terms of finding which one to sell and it was a really a kind of close competition so if I go into Alibaba and our initial purchase here uh, we have a clone of uh, Charlie Munger and also Guy Spear and I've got another note here uh, that Pabri did sell to kind of swap from Alibaba to process and uh, we did have some interesting kind of activity from Charlie Munger which we also think is uh, to do with kind of tax loss harvesting so we have kind of two genuine clones still sitting there for the Alibaba position and if we compare that to the Berkshire position, we have, if I go into Berkshire Hathaway here and look at our initial purchase back in October, we have uh, again a couple of genuine clones, so Warren Buffett uh, and Lee Lu being the genuine ones. Buffett was a little interesting because that was kind of via a share repurchase and also Lee Lu has has genuinely just bought Berkshire. Uh, Guy Spear and Norbert Lou also have Berkshire in their portfolios, but they have owned it for a very long time and it didn't meet our 30% price threshold test. So I needed to pick one of those two stocks, Alibaba or Berkshire, to cut in half, and they both have two genuine clones, 
and it really just at that point came down to price. So um, Berkshire Hathaway has been largely flat since we bought it, maybe up a little, uh, whereas Alibaba has been getting hammered. We're down like 40% on that position. So uh, to me, it made a little more sense to sell Berkshire, and that's kind of what we use to free up a bit of cash to purchase into one of these new stocks. So continuing down the list here, we have Activision Blizzard, no change in Activision, and uh, then we have our two brand new stocks in the portfolio. Firstly, we have Google. Now that is a direct clone of Li Lu. He actually exited Meta completely, which is, uh, as you'll see towards the bottom, a stock that used to be in the portfolio, which is no longer in the portfolio. Uh, so we have sold Meta in order to help put some money towards Google. Uh, and the second new position is Countryside Partnerships, which is a clone of Norbert Lu. It's a stock that he has bought in the UK, which was we've had some recent filings for. So basically the 50% of Berkshire that was sold and the 100% of Meta that was sold, the cash generated from those two sales was split in half, uh, and half went towards Google and half went towards Countryside Partnerships. Continuing down the portfolio, we also have uh, Daily Journal Corporation, which is a clone of Guy Spear, uh, Process, which is a clone of Guy Spear and Monish Pabrai, and then we have our three kind of historic positions. So the Vanguard short-term treasuries, that was just our kind of cash um, or proxy for cash when we first got the portfolio started. We have just recently completely sold Meta, and uh, I believe it was last quarter we sold Hilton Grand Vacations to uh, kind of upgrade the portfolio to some Mount Rushmore stocks. HGV was initially a kind of Cliff Sosin when we were struggling to find Mount Rushmore type investments, but that is no longer the case. So we now have a nine stock portfolio, about eight of those stocks is approximately a 10% position at cost. And Alibaba, even though it's only our third biggest stock, is our one remaining kind of 20% at cost position. So let's scroll up here and just have a look at one of the reports in Shearsight. Uh, if we jump across to reports and have a look at the diversity report, this will show us kind of the current weightings for the overall portfolio. So um, if I order by largest to smallest there, uh, you can see kind of the pie chart of how our different allocations stack up. And uh, we have a pretty evenly weighted, uh, all things considered, portfolio at this point. Our uh, biggest position is 13% and our smallest position is a little under 9%. So pretty equally weighted. But the next time we do find a new stock for the portfolio, assuming that Alibaba's price doesn't move much between now and then, uh, that Alibaba position may well get a lot smaller because we will have to uh, cut that in half. That will be our last kind of 20% cost stock to... Um, kind of cut to make it a full 10 by 10 portfolio. So that concludes the update for the Shameless Cloner portfolio and gives you some of the latest moves that have happened. And uh, I'd be very interested to hear your thoughts down in the comment section below about how this portfolio is starting to come together. We're very close to getting that full kind of 10 by 10 portfolio. Uh, in terms of returns, we're slightly lagging the S&P 500 at the moment, although 2022 has been pretty good for us, all things considered. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed that update and uh, be sure to subscribe so that you can see future updates every single quarter i want to keep this kind of shameless clone portfolio going for a long time to track you know whether we can genuinely get market beating performance just by copying the best investors so hope you enjoyed the video if you did please hit like and also hit subscribe and i will see you in the next video cheers